In this lesson, we're going to look at life on Earth, life on our planet Earth. Can you remember, before we begin, how old do scientists think the universe is? See if you can remember. How old do scientists think the Earth is? Can you remember? Have a little think. How old do scientists think the Earth is? Well, well done if you got those right. Let's move on and look at today's lesson. Okay, so when did life begin? Well, scientists today, we don't really know much about the earliest developments in life. We do know that the early Earth, the very, very early Earth, was a ball of molten rock and doesn't seem much chance there was life around then. Uh, and we do have life now. So, if we have life now and we didn't have life then, then life must have begun at some point. The thing is, all life today shares certain traits, certain things, from me to you to chimpanzees to birds to trees. All life on Earth is made of cells and in those cells there is something called the genetic code. That's like basically the instructions for making and keeping the animal going or the plant going. So we all have those things, all life on Earth. And that does suggest that maybe all life on Earth comes from a very, very simple, common ancestor. What's the evidence for that? So we've just mentioned that all life has genetic code in its cells. In fact, all life on Earth today, you might, you know, you've obviously got your family and then you're probably related to me if you go back a few hundred thousand years. Um, so all humans are related. Go back further, you're actually related to chimpanzees. Go back even further, you've got a common ancestor with birds and with lizards. Even if you go back far enough, you have a common ancestor with trees. It's a bit strange, but basically all life on Earth is a family and you have some close relatives and you have some very, very distant relatives. Now we do know a fairly good idea now, scientists have a fairly good idea of how long it takes for genetic code to change and to make new animals. For example, our closest living relative, the chimpanzee, we probably separated from them that we both had a common ancestor a few million years ago. We can go back 200 million years to when mammals first started. We can go back to even more distant ancestors of us, go back to when we were fish type creatures. We can go back to when animals first evolved a backbone, it was these are the vertebrates when backbones first evolved, and tracing back and back, further back in time, we get some idea of when life itself first appeared. Another piece of evidence for ancient life, do you remember those strange lumpy things called stromatolites which were covered in bacteria and that bacteria released oxygen into the atmosphere and the seas? Well we found fossilized stromatolites, that's stromatolites that were died and got and, and then left their shape in the rock three and a half billion years old, so very, very old indeed. So all of this evidence in the DNA points to the first simple cells of life forming about 3.8 billion years ago. After that point, it seems that life stayed very simple for a very long time. So 3.8 billion years ago, the first sing single-celled organisms appeared appeared in the, in the oceans of the earth and it stayed that way for a very long time. For billions of years all life was very simple organisms made up of one cell up to something which is called the Cambrian explosion. Called an explosion because it's not really suddenly, it's over millions of years, but you get lots and lots of complex new species occurring in the so-called Cambrian explosion of 550 million years ago. So what's the evidence for the Cambrian explosion? Well, fossils, a huge fossil field in Canada actually called the Burgess Shale and 
lots of fossil evidence all over the Earth points to, be you know, below 550 million years ago, no evidence of complex life. After 550 million years ago, we get evidence of complex life forms appearing. These are called fossils, by the way. These allow us to have a look at the shape and the structure of these early primitive life forms. Fossils are the remains of plants and animals that died and were then preserved in sedimentary rocks as bits of sand and so on drifted on top and over time rock formed. So if you actually look at some of this life from the Cambrian explosion, it looks very, very strange to modern eyes. These are artists' ideas taken from the fossil evidence in the Burgess Shale of some of the strange looking creatures, strange to our eyes, that existed back then. Here's another picture. Very, very strange and alien looking to our eyes today. Then evolution carried on after that Cambrian explosion. So 500 million years ago, the ancestors of modern fish appeared. 475 million years ago, the first land plants. 400 million years ago, insects and seeds appeared on the earth for the first time. Around 300 million years ago, reptiles. 200 million years ago, mammals. By the way, say hello to your great, 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 a few hundred thousand times back, grandfather. 150 million years ago, birds. And 130 million years ago, flowers. So the life evolved and new species appeared o over time. Here's a particularly strange example of evolution. This small deer-like creature existed about 48 million years ago. Over millions of years though, it changed its shape dramatically as evolution occurred. And today, the modern descendant of that ancient small deer is the whale. Isn't it strange to think that the massive blue whale is descended from that tiny creature? Let's have a look at coal now. So 400 to 300 million years ago, vast forests covered the earth. It was called the Carboniferous Period. And huge forests covered the earth. And what those forests did is they took carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and they used it to make themselves, the trees and the plants were made out of carbon dioxide. And so over a hundred million years, the earth actually cooled down because carbon dioxide acts like a blanket keeping the earth warm. And those massive forests were pulling the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere to construct their own uh, bodies, to, to make themselves. And over time, over millions of years, the, 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 dead, uh, the dead plants from those forests, more layers went on top and more layers and more layers on top of that. And over hundreds of millions of years and under immense pressure, all the rock pressing down from above and the heat from the earth and the heat from all that pressure, those ancient forests were turned into coal, which we use today and burn in our power stations. We put that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere again, putting that blanket, that heating blanket back into the atmosphere. Oil is also very, very important to modern humans today. We use it in our cars, we make plastics out of it. So where does oil come from? That black sticky substance that we make petrol out of and so on. Well, oil is the remains of ancient, ancient plants and animals in the sea. So tiny sea plants and animals died and were buried on the ocean floor. Over time they were covered by layers of silt and sand. Over millions of years the remains were buried deeper and deeper. The enormous heat and pressure turned them into oil and gas and today we drill down through layers of sand, silt and rock to reach the rock formations that contain oil and gas deposits. The age of the dinosaurs so between 230 and 65 million years ago, massive reptiles ruled the earth. They were dominant for 160 million years. Our ancestors, tiny mammals, did evolve about 200 million years ago. So they would have been hiding around in the bushes. I don't think they would have liked to take on a T-Rex, do you? So 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs disappeared and lots of other species too. This is called a mass extinction. An extinction is when a species disappears from the earth. In fact, half of all plant and animal species 
died around 65 million years ago. 90% of the biomass of life actually disappeared 65 million years ago. So what caused that mass extinction? There's a few theories. One theory is that a massive asteroid the size of Mount Everest slammed into the Earth. Another theory is that there was lots of volcanic activity and that helped to kill off a lot of species. And some people believe in a combination of both of those theories. Let's have a look at some of the evidence for the asteroid theory. If you dig down, you find something called the KT boundary, and that was formed about 65 million years ago. Below the KT boundary, so older than 65 million years, you do find fossils of dinosaurs. Above the KT boundary, no fossils of dinosaurs. So it seems that something happened in around that time, 65 million years ago, and that is connected with the disappearance of the dinosaurs. What is found in that layer, in the KT boundary, is something called iridium. Iridium is a metal which is very, very rare on Earth, but is contained in asteroids. So that evidence points towards perhaps an asteroid striking the Earth, and then that iridium spreading and raining down around the Earth and settling in the KT boundary. If an asteroid did strike the Earth, though, wouldn't you expect to see a massive crater from the impact? Well, fairly recently, in the 20th century, a massive crater 250 kilometres across was discovered in Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula, and that's a Chicxulub crater, and that actually seems to be dated around 65 million years ago. So a fair bit of evidence there for the asteroid impact and maybe that causing the mass extinction. So how long have we been around? If you have a look at this timeline here, the Earth begins around about four and a half billion years ago. The very first simple life appears about 3.8 billion years ago. Those stromatolites start to bring oxygen into the atmosphere around about 2.4 million year, billion years ago. Then you get the Cambrian explosion, a very first uh, complex life forming, around about 300 million years ago, the age of the dinosaurs starts. Our ancestors' mammals form about 200 million years ago. <laughs> and finally, last of all, here we are. We haven't been around for very long, really. 400,000 to 250,000 years ago. That's when the first human ancestors walked the earth. The first modern humans, rather. So let's have a quick summary. So simple life evolved around 3.8 billion years ago. The Cambrian explosion about 550 million years ago. And that's when more complex life made of many cells formed. There's evidence for that. For both of those in DNA in, and also in fossils. Coal fr uh, is from ancient forests hundreds of million years ago and oil comes from ancient sea life uh, and both of those by burning them we're releasing the carbon from those ancient plants and animals back into the atmosphere. There was a mass extinction about 65 million years ago and there's some evidence in the KT boundary that that could have come from an asteroid. So there you go, I hope you made some good notes and good luck with the quiz.